Hi, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and I'm really excited about this product. Uh, this is our latest generation of the Starshoot line of cameras. This is the Starshoot G10 color uh, CMOS imaging camera. It's based off the Sony IMX uh, 294 CMOS chip, which is a nice big 10.7 megapixel uh, CMOS uh, chip, which is 14 bit. Uh, it's got 4.63 micron pixels, so nice kind of medium size, very sensitive, um, and also high resolution. So it's designed primarily for deep sky imaging, but also will do video, so you can do uh, planetary photography uh, with it as well. So let me go through some of the features and I'll show you exactly what this camera is all about. All right, well, first of all, the chip itself, the, like I said, the Sony IMX uh, 294, it's a one-shot color chip, so that means it's not a mono chip. Uh, you, you take one image and you get a color image. You don't have to go through a red, a green, a blue, uh, filter and then combine your images together. Now normally a one-shot color uh, chip is less sensitive than uh, the mono chip. Well, that's, that's still true, but this chip from Sony is, is very sensitive itself. It's one of the new generations of CMOS chips. It's got an uh, adjustable gain setting, so you can get um, really sensitive uh, details in not a very long exposure. Um, like I said, it's got uh, a gain setting, so you can slide it from no gain up to full gain. Now, as the gain goes up, the chip does get noisier, but let's say you're doing a 30 second shot at the lowest gain setting. You slide the gain up to halfway and you get a lot more detail, though the image is a bit no more noisy. Now, the way you get around that is just to stack images, and everybody doing astro images is stacking multiple shots together. So you push the gain up and you take no more than maybe like a two minute exposure, and it's amazing the detail that you can get. Um, I took uh, several exposures, uh, one of the Dumbbell Nebula, uh, I did the Veil, and the Elephant uh, Trunk Nebula. My exposures never went above two minutes. Uh, the gain was set about halfway up, and I was just amazed at how much detail I got. And then I stacked a bunch of those shots together to get a very smooth, noise-free image. So I'm really excited about what this thing can do for, for deep sky. It's got a two-stage thermoelectric cooler built into it, so that means you can get down to about 35 degrees Celsius below ambient temperature, which is, which is very cold. And the reason you do that is to lower, lower the noise characteristics of the chip. Uh, every time you lower the noise, I think the spec is uh, like every six or seven degrees, you get half the noise. So you can imagine get, getting this down 30, 35 degrees below ambient temperature, uh, it becomes much less noisy, um, leading to better exposures and, and better detail in each exposure. So uh, it's powered in order to get that cooling. There, there's two ways to power it. There's a USB port. That's the data connection to the um, laptop or your desktop computer, whatever, however you're powering this. Um, you don't need external power for that. But for the cooler, you do need 12 volt uh, DC external source. So the uh, camera comes with a little AC adapter. So you plug that into your uh, power source. You plug the USB into the computer. And now you can uh, expose images and you can lower the noise down dramatically uh, by lowering the temperature of the chip. The camera is baked in an industrial oven at the factory in order to uh, purge the CMOS chip uh, cavity inside of any moisture. So at lower temperatures, it's not gonna dew up. If you really try to push it to its lowest temperature, you might get some dew inside. So you usually wanna back up a little bit. The, the cooler is regulated, so you can set a specific temperature and it'll stay at that temperature. So what I was doing was bringing it down to like minus 25, a pretty darn cold, temperature, but not dramatically off to the extreme of what the, what the cooler could do. And I got great results. Um, if the uh, uh, moisture content in the chamber ever does rise a bit to uh, start doing up, there's a external desiccant plug that comes with a camera. You can unscrew this uh, plug right there and put in the desiccant canister and put in your own uh, little desiccant beads and uh, dry the chamber that way. So you're, you're pretty much set for the future uh, with this camera. Let me show you some of the features um, on the back of the camera. This is the, the control panel here. I've already told you about the USB port. Now that's a USB 3 port. This thing is a very high frame rate, um, high megapixel camera. So there's a lot of data going back and forth. That's why it's USB 3. Um, at full frame, you can actually download at 14 bit, something like 20 frames a second. At 8 bit, it'll go up to 30 plus frames a second. At, at 10 plus megapixels, so it's a very high frame rate. But to take full advantage of this camera, you, you wanna have a USB 3 port on your computer. Over on the side here are two uh, other USB ports. Now, what are those for? That, that's such a handy feature to have. So this is a USB 2 hub, basically. Now, what does that mean? When you're 
when you've got the camera attached to your telescope, usually that's not the only device you've got attached. You probably have a guide scope on the side attached with its own USB port. Uh, maybe a filter wheel, maybe an off-axis guider. Well, off-axis guider is not going to have power, but uh, uh, how about an adaptive optics, adaptive optics system? Something else with USB power. That usually means you've got data from three different cameras or three different peripherals uh, all stringing down to the laptop. With a USB hub here, you plug the guide camera into this camera, or you plug the fil filter wheel or the adaptive optics into this, and then you just have the one USB port going to the computer. So cable management becomes much easier to, to manage, right? There's only one cable dragging on the telescope and, and you don't have as much uh, weight shifting or pulling, so your guiding is basically gonna be better. So uh, if you have this thing fully set up in the ideal way, you'll just have the USB cable and the power cable coming off of the camera, nothing else. Everything else will be self-contained up on the side of the telescope. So a very handy uh, feature to have. I talked about the power port, that is for the um, cooler to power it. And then you've got these status indicator lights, power, system, TEC, that's the thermoelectric cooler, and the fan. They'll basically give you um, information on the status of the system. When you're exposing, uh, it will uh, or when it's downloading, it'll flash. Uh, if the thermoelectric cooler is on, it'll tell you. So uh, a handy, quick look at the camera and you know everything's working well. In front, it comes with a two-inch nozzle and you can actually unscrew that. So first of all, the two-inch nozzle will slip into any, any two-inch focuser. Um, if you unscrew it, you have the standard 42 millimeter T-thread here, and you can probably see the chip down below. It's a 4 thirds inch chip, so um, it's small enough to, even if you wanted to put this on an inch and a quarter system, it's probably not going to vignette very much. You'll just have to get a 1 and a quarter T-adapter to fit onto the front, and you can do that. Otherwise, this will thread onto the back of uh, any T-mount uh, telescope system, uh, onto the back of a filter wheel if it's got T-threads, uh, pretty much any configuration you can think of. Oh, off-axis guiders will have a T-thread, so you can get a thin off-axis guider on here for not much back focus uh, requirement. So a really handy system for grabbing onto whatever you've got in front of it. All right, so I've got a, uh, an astrograph here, a little six inch, basically how you detach it. Two inch nozzle slips into the focuser, not much to it, and then clamps down. I like to orient the chip so the X and Y axis is oriented with deck and RA um, of your uh, telescope. It's just easier when you're trying to acquire a star or uh, an object. It's, you know up and down on the hand control is going to move the star up and down and left and right, same thing. All right, once the camera's on, you're going to also attach your peripherals, the USB 3.0 port here, and your power adapter. Now, it's not a very long power cord. That's actually done on purpose so it keeps the voltage at the right amount for the cooler to work uh, efficiently. So what I usually do is I put the power brick for the adapter somewhere mounted on the side of the scope or on the um, tray or even attached to the scope somewhere. That way it kind of piggybacks along and you get a nice uh, power uh, output of the thermoelectric cooler to keep it exactly regulated. So this is basically the configuration you'd be uh, doing when you're, when you're imaging. Uh, just add your guide scope and then plug the guide scope into the USB uh, port up top. And then you probably want to do a little bit of cable management, maybe uh, attach these to the side here, to the knob, just so they don't just dangle straight down. That way you get the best, um, least amount of flex, because if the cables are being pulled on the side of the camera, uh, you don't know how uh, perfectly solid your focuser is. So cable management is definitely uh, something you got to worry about when you're imaging uh, in the night. Now, I wanted to talk about the software. This uh, runs off of Windows 7, 8, 10, and it comes with its own driver. It comes with its own basic uh, image acquisition software. And then it also comes with an ASCOM driver. And that's the, the key to unlocking the, the potential of this camera is the ASCOM driver. So the software it comes with is um, uh, capable of grabbing video, grabbing stills. You can grab the FITS format uh, if you're doing dark frames or flats or light frames, it'll flag them all. Um, and you can do some basic stacking and some basic stuff. But there are programs out there that Astro Imagers use that are dedicated to advanced Astro Imaging. Um, doing the processing, doing the median combines, all the, the math formulas kind of behind the scenes. Um, and those programs are designed to work with any camera that is ASCOM compatible because those programs themselves are ASCOM compatible. I suppose I should step back and, and tell you what ASCOM is. It's a set of drivers that's sort of universal in the astronomy world. Um, we built a, an ASCOM driver for this, which means it will work with any of those programs, 
without actually having to be specifically built into those programs, right? So um, you can use this with Sequence Generator Pro, with SharpCap, with Maxim. There's, there's a bunch of programs out there that are dedicated for uh, very high-end astro imaging. And download the ASCOM driver for this and connect it on, and, and away you go. You'll, you'll get the full potential of what the camera can do. The camera comes with the USB 3.0 cable, uh, the 12 volt power cable, AC power cable. Uh, it comes with a uh, external desiccant plug, so you can uh, put your own desiccant in to keep it dry uh, in the future if need be. And it all fits into a hard shell case to protect it all. Uh, software is available as a, as a download on our website. I wanted to just kind of list off some of the specs of the camera just for uh, everyone's benefit. Like I said, it's based on the Sony IMX294 uh, CMOS chip. That's a 14-bit chip with 4.63 micron pixels. The diagonal of the chip is 23.1 millimeters. That's that four-thirds format. The exposure time ranges from 0.1 milliseconds, very, very short, 0.1 milliseconds up to 1,000 seconds. I don't know why you'd ever do 1,000 seconds because the chip is so sensitive, but it's there if you need it if it's a super dark night. Um, and at 0.1 milliseconds, uh, basically you can do uh, video. So lunar imaging, planetary imaging, uh, all that's within range as well. Subframes are supported as well as binning. So you can bin the camera to get uh, even faster frame rates or more sensitivity or a smaller frame for um, faster downloads. There's an image buffer, 512 megabyte image buffer. The covering of the chip is IR blocked. So you can use this with some refractors that may not be entirely corrected in the infrared. It won't bloat the stars. There's an infrared blocking uh, window over the chip, um, which will help if you're using it on a not so well corrected refractor. If, uh, if it's not very well corrected in the infrared, it'll help keep the star bloat uh, to a minimum. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is the back focus. It's 17.5 millimeters from the uh, front edge of the uh, T threads to where the chip sits. So you can use that to factor in if you're using a coma corrector or a uh, uh, field uh, flattener for a refractor, usually those require 55 millimeters of back focus. So 17.5 millimeters here, and then whatever else you need in terms of T adapter extensions to get to your 55 millimeters.